Well, good morning. Uh, the appointed uh, time has come. Uh, thank you for joining the FTW uh, webinar. This month, we're looking at uh, some ways to get lifelike sound, and uh, we have uh, enlisted the help of uh, a microphone vendor that knows a whole lot about getting lifelike sound. So we're going to be joined uh, today by J.C. Bittens from Earthworks, and we're going to talk about uh, lifelike sound, whether you're looking for intelligibility in conferences or you're looking for uh, musical fidelity for uh, choirs and, and the musical performance. Uh, this company does know a great deal about how to do it. So this will be an interesting presentation, especially as we get into the installed applications. Uh, this is going to be a little different than uh, how some other uh, microphones approach some of these same applications. And uh, there's some interesting slides that uh, kind of made some light bulbs go off for me, and I hope it it does for you too as well. So anyway, thank you for joining. I see a lot of people coming online here, so this is a good time to go through uh, uh, some of the details of uh, what we'll be doing here so you know how it works. As here that involves simply typing questions to us. Uh, I will accumulate them at this end. If you have questions, type them in on the uh, go to meeting screen. Um, I will see them at this end and at that point uh, accumulate those and at the end of the presentation then I will uh, uh, ask our, our presenter and uh, we can comment on those. Also, uh, the fact that this is being recorded is intentional so that you can alert your coworkers or others who might not be available to watch and listen at this time to tune in later. So we keep those up on the site indefinitely, and you can find those on the FDW, or links to those anyway, up on the FDW uh, website. And uh, finally, as you uh, watch this presentation today and form opinions as to whether you liked it or didn't like it or wish you had more of this or needed less of that, that information helps us make better webinars in the future. So please do stick around to take the uh, the survey at the end. Before you check out, please uh, do take that. That helps us a lot to try and fine tune these webinars and make them as uh, applicable to your applications and, and meet your needs as, as possible. So with that, uh, I'm going to get out of the way here and uh, and make room for our presenter. And, and you've had a moment to look at the uh, uh, slide there. Uh, JC has uh, quite, it brings quite a lot of uh, industry experience to this. Uh, JC, as we look at your slides, uh, uh, you've worked for and represented quite a few companies in this industry. Uh, certainly your work in a uh, recording studio uh, has given you the ear to know what is good and, and uh, what some of the problems to overcome are, and certainly working for that distinguished list of, uh, of companies that are major in this industry uh, gives you a very interesting and valuable perspective. So uh, with that, uh, let me turn it over to you, and you can explain to folks uh, some of the concepts that we were talking about before we got into this today. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, partner with you and the team. Uh, this is a big uh, opportunity for Earthworks and the team back at the factory. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into it, if that's okay. Um, Please do. Earthworks. Uh, Earthworks, who are we? Um, Earthworks was started by the late... David Blackmer. He is our founder. He uh, had started a little company that you may have heard of called DVX. Uh, he is also the founder of the VCA-based compressor, limiter, and multiple other technologies. He was even on the Mercury telemetry rocket program back in the day. Uh, so he, he, he really had a lot of incredible uh, engineering uh, discoveries and, and things behind him. So he had uh, purchased this factory called, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this factory in Milford, New Hampshire, and uh, had renovated it and started a construction company called Earthworks to uh, do the work on it. And upon completing that work, he decided to get back into audio. And uh, the factory is located on that picture uh, to the left of the screen, the, the lower uh, two-story segment of it. And uh, we recently expanded, uh, taking over more of that building so that we have doubled our production size uh, as of the beginning of this year. But um, what David had started doing was actually making studio monitors. And if you ever take a look on the web and take a look at the Earthworks studio monitors, you'll notice that the high frequency driver is offset from the low frequency or other mids, uh, depending on which speaker it is, and they're physically time aligned, meaning the smaller speaker that represents or reproduces the high frequencies that move faster is offset back than the larger speaker that re reproduces the low frequencies, so that when there's an impulse, like a snap, they catch up by the time that they hit your ears. Uh, he went to go find a microphone that was supposed to be a test and measurement microphone that was Omni and found that 
it was it sounded great at all frequencies or most all frequencies when you were uh, on access to the microphone. But as you went off access, I'm covering my face. It started to sound like this because it wasn't truly on me. So that's where this highly educated engineer decided to go and come up with our Omnis. So if you've ever had the opportunity to try Earthworks QTC or a TC or M series Omni, you basically can talk into it from the XLR or to the side or to the front, and you're going to sound lifelike and very even. So let's jump right into it. Uh, one of the things that we found is you'll notice that most of the, well, all of the Earthworks microphones are small diaphragm. And each of those blocks of, of uh, 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 on the graphs represents uh, a, a, a time period. And it's basically each of those blocks is faster or is what uh, the average ear hears. And so you'll notice an impulse with the Earthworks microphone, we recover faster because of the small diaphragm than conventional microphones are still vibrating and recovering from an impulse. That by the time there's another impulse, it's going over top of the previous one. So that affects your sound. The next thing that uh, David did was uh, work on the polar pattern. And so if you take a look at the Earthworks polar pattern there at those four frequencies, uh, we are in control of our polar pattern. And our competitive Omni, it's only Omni, as you notice, at about that 1K and at about the 5K, and then things start to drop off. And as you go to the side or back of that microphone, that's where it'll sound like something's over your face. So take that to uh, to heart, and that's what the Earthworks products are going to offer. So one of the very things that also uh, is important is pattern control. So our cardioid microphones, you'll notice, uh, have a lot more control as well. You can speak into the top on access of the microphone or off to the side, and you're going to sound really lifelike. But as you go behind the microphone, it's as though there's this invisible acoustic wall that has close to, and it varies with different different products we make, uh, almost uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 dB rejection. So you could literally walk up to a line array, a ground stack of speakers, and put that XLR almost on the grill, and it's not going to feed back. It's amazing. Uh, our competitors on the right, not so much. Hence, we know that sound called feedback. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into some of the products. We're going to go ahead and look at uh, one of our growing markets, and that's the church market, uh, our choir microphones. We make what's called the C30, and in our, our microphones, we incorporate the frequency on the high end as part of the SKU name. So for example, this product here is called the C for choir, 30 for 30 kilohertz on the high end. And this comes with either a uh, white or black option and a canary cable, which comes uh, at a fixed length, but we can always do custom lengths uh, pending your application. And we'd sell these usually with a uh, blank tail so that they can be pulled and terminated uh, however you see fit. But what's the uh, application about this? You'll notice that, or you'll find that people think that Earthworks is more expensive than other comparable microphones. But when you drill down to it, upgrading your microphone is usually the most affordable way to upgrade the audio in your system. And here are a couple quick illustrations to talk about that. This would be one of our competitive microphone companies that makes a choir style microphone that uh, it's taking up to one, two, three, four, five, six microphones to cover this group of people. And you'll notice as the pink hue gets darker, that person is now coming through two or three microphones. And what usually happens at this point is what's called phase canceling. So I won't really cover that in this webinar, but it's something you could probably Google and learn more about if you don't know. But phase canceling is going to wind up making the sound thin, and in some cases, negating people who may be in some of those back rows. Now, we have to remember that in each case, there is another channel of your mixing board, a snake channel, a run, EQ time, that maybe an inexperienced person at the church or school who doesn't understand EQ is now adding to the mix and maybe making things worse. So because Earthworks has lifelike sound, razor flat in terms of uh, its coverage pattern, as you saw in those earlier uh, polar patterns, 
we can cover that same type of uh, choir with less microphones. And you're seeing uh, a whole more even coverage pattern. And we're going to have less trouble with phasing because of our control of the polar patterns. So this is one of those things that help hopefully answer the question of, wait, you're more expensive, but wait, you need less of ours product and you need less microphone cables, less stands, less mixing channel, less EQ. What's the value to that? So that's our choir series microphone that's available at FDW. The next big segment for us is our FM, which we call flex mics, our, our lectern microphones. These come in several different variants. The one that you see on the screen is entirely all flexible. We have ones with rigid centers, and you'll notice we also have a mounting system that's pictured on this lectern that locks the microphone down into the lectern and also acts as a shock mount. What happens is this microphone now cannot be removed from that lectern, and this is kind of nice in school settings, government settings, even uh, courtrooms, because that microphone cannot be pulled out and uh, taken, stolen, or used for other nefarious reasons. But uh, it, it, it really locks that thing down. And there's a, a rubber O-ring that's in there. So if someone or a group of people, kids or whatever have you, are pulling on this thing, you can always replace that O-ring with little trouble. Uh, it takes a lot to do that, believe me. I've been with the Earthworks uh, product line for some time and have not seen that happen. But if you can imagine that polar pattern that you saw with the choir microphone, this microphone is going to have the same version. It's also available in a hypercardioid pattern should you need to do so if you're in a very reflective application. But where do lectern microphones really differ from other microphones? Generally, you know, in churches and schools, we have the experienced user, the principal, the pastor, a, a, a um, person who normally is speaking, you know, even a deacon. But where a microphone truly shines is for the inexperienced person, a child coming up to make an announcement at school, at church, who may not even be tall enough to be on access with your typical lectern microphone. Well, with our case, you're going to be able to be lower than that microphone or to the sides, just as I was explaining with the other polar patterns on that choir microphone, and still come through the microphone. Now, granted, if you're using a hypercardioid version, you're going to need to be in that tighter pattern. But that's also dependent upon the acoustics of the room. So at this time, that is our FM product that's available. Um, here's a picture of another application in a very, very reflective church. And in this case, they had some column speakers mounted to the wall. Uh, it's tough to see in this picture, but it was basically behind the microphone. So in this application, our hypercardioid really suited this application because uh, the speakers were putting out in their dispersion patterns uh, outside of what our microphone was picking up. So this is the FM flex mic uh, product line available. And uh, also we have the CMM1, which is the mounting system that's available. Uh, so these are all available at FDW as well. The next in the series uh, for what we are seeing growth in is the conference room, meeting room, huddle space. And these microphones are table or ceiling mountable, and these are uh, omnidirectional. Uh, the ones on the right, you know, are no more than a quarter. And not pictured here is our new color. We've replaced that painted silver with a, a brushed stainless steel. But these are hemispherical uh, pattern, and they're going to pick up in uh, 180 degrees around and 90 degrees across the top. Um, I'm sorry, 360 by 180 across the top of the table or ceiling. And then the ones on the left have a touch switch that just by touching the microphone, uh, it has uh, the ability to go back to your DSP. And you'll notice we have a Euro Phoenix connector on those. We also offer a RJ45 connector, but it's however you program it in your DSP, whether it be BiAmp, uh, QSIS, RAIN. Uh, we are DSP agnostic. It's just basically comes down how you contact, how you program your contact closure. 
whether it's push to talk, latch open, uh, uh, mute, whatever have you. But there are basically four situations of LED colors available. Uh, the first is off, which is black. The second would be there's five green, the third, five red, or the fourth, the red and green on together, which gives it a orange hue. So we'll see people actually programming that for maybe call waiting, or if there's a network drop or something else to let them know that there is a, a situation with the audio. Uh, we're seeing a lot more LEDs used in uh, uh, conferencing to give visual status notification of the audio. And again, you know, one of the easiest ways to upgrade your conferencing system is to upgrade your microphones. And without audio, you've got no audio conference going on or video conference going on. Sorry, <laughs> you've got audio. But anyway, um, so that is our fixed installation microphones. Now, coming soon uh, that we're announcing very shortly is a version that looks very similar to this, but you'll see a slight grill on the top of there. And these will be uh, directional in either a cardioid or figure eight pattern that uh, are very low profile and uh, will be priced similar to these. So uh, you'll see those shortly being released. Our next series is take that same installation application, whether it be table or ceiling, and add a gooseneck to it. The, these goosenecks are available in three inch, six inch, 10 inch, or 12 inch. Uh, also, we've gotten rid of the painted silver, and now they're available in a brushed stainless steel. And they're also available with the touch uh, programmable sensor in them so that, again, they connect to the DSP of your choice that works however you programmed it and, available, and, and provides those four colors, the black, green, red, or a combination of all LEDs to give you orange. Uh, so think about this. This offers the same rejection from the rear that all of our cardioids do. So you could mount this in the ceiling. Uh, let's just say it's one of the 12 inch ones. Have a projector or HVAC vent near or close to it, and it's going to reject the audio from the rear. Now, the one thing you do gotta watch with any HVAC is sometimes those things really blow and you can get some wind noises. So we do offer a foam uh, windscreen that, that comes with that. Uh, to the far right, you'll notice we have uh, a rigid center that became available uh, last year just after Infocom. And the rigid center ones are available in black and in brushed stainless steel in both the uh, just microphone version or with the programmable touch center uh, with the LED ring. So if you think about it again, oh my gosh, that's more expensive than maybe you know one of the Audix mics or one of the other ones that are out there. Well, let's take a look at the conventional microphone polar pattern. You know, you've got, uh, you know, that's what a, a um, nine foot ceiling, and we're looking at their their conventional mic polar pattern. You know, we're starting to go up to four microphones and eight microphones to really cover that room. Now, four if people are always sitting, eight if people are standing or moving around. But now let's think about programming time, and let's think about uh, running cable and all of the other things that are necessary. Pardon me one second, I have to cough. I apologize there. So with a room that's about that size, uh, 15 by 20, we can cover that with a couple Earthworks microphones without any trouble. So that winds up being uh, lifelike sound, so less programming time, less uh, EQing or little EQing, and less install time. So let's jump right into uh, some of our other products. All right, so omnidirectional. Um, on the left there uh, is our M series microphones. Available through FDW is the M23. This will be our test and measurement microphone that uh, goes up to 23 kilohertz on the high end. Uh, we offer the TC series, the TC20, also uh, in by itself or matched pairs through um, uh, FDW. The um, ability to uh, record at high sound pressure levels uh, up to almost 150 dB SPL uh, is, is provided by the TC series. Um, and then the QTC series is going to be up to about 140 dB SPL, you know, for quieter sources, right? Uh, 
But uh, these, again, the difference is they're all omni, but what frequency do they go to on the high end? Okay, now let's talk about our directional microphones. Um, it's available through FTW. We have the Periscope series, which uh, is just like that very first choir mic that I showed you, but it's got an XLR in it so that if you wanted to uh, go ahead and put this on a microphone stand and have a portable microphone that you can uh, move around a stage or uh, a band or close mic a guitar amplifier, uh, these are going to be both in cardioid pattern, available in white and black. Um, the directional microphones on the left, uh, we see the SR20. That's going to be a cardioid handheld, but you can remove that windscreen. And if you see the threads on our other uh, cardioids, uh, that means you can add that windscreen to it. The difference being stainless or powder coated black. Uh, the short one there is our SR25. This is one of our most popular microphones due to the low price point of it that um, we use in our drum kits, we use for guitar cabinet miking. Uh, it's kind of the do all everything cardioid condenser that we make. All right, so let's jump into it a little bit. Uh, the SR20 LS, this is a uh, sound reinforcement, that's what SR stands for, 20 kilohertz, and it's low sensitivity. This is our kick drum microphone. One of the things that we found is that uh, kick drums, people stick an average kick drum microphone right inside of the hole cut in the kick drum, and that uh, there's turbulent air passing through that can oftentimes uh, cloud the signal, distort the microphone, and you cannot really move the microphone around to get lifelike sound. So this microphone goes from 20 kilohertz down to 20 hertz, and it's very long. So you can use a short stand, get it in the hole of the kick drum, past where the turbulent air is, move it around till you get lifelike sound. So this is great for both live and uh, recording applications. The other family uh, that's in our drum series, I'm sorry, the other product that's in the family of our drum series is the DM drum mic 20 kilohertz. This is an incredible microphone for tom, snares, uh, congas, percussions, uh, timbales, all kinds of high SPL uh, microphones. And it's, again, it's our 20 kilohertz cardioid capsule, but it's on a very rigid gooseneck that comes with a very nice rim mount. And I'll talk about that more in just a second. But basically this microphone now lets the drummer be part of the mixing process because basically you can start with a little fan of power, bring the fader to unity, a little bit of gain, and then move that microphone around on the tom or snare or conga or timbali till it really sounds like what this drummer has spent their time uh, building and tuning the set to sound like. Then if you do need EQ, it's just for simple artistic reasons. The nice thing about the RM1 is it does eliminate the need for mic stands. You can, um, you know, on a church uh, platform where they're using uh, sound barriers and clear Lexon protectors, you know, the mic stands wind up making uh, those things take up a little bit more space. So you can move this in close if you need those, you can move those in close if you need to. Uh, we also include a pair of SR25s uh, in, in our drum portfolio. And this is the one that I talked to about earlier when I was showing our other cardioid uh, condensers. Uh, this goes from 25 kilohertz down to 20 hertz. Uh, it has beautiful for rejection from the rear. And uh, again, it's great for live and recording applications. So you can put together some DM20s, a couple SR25s for overheads, and one of our SR20 LSs to make a terrific drum set kit for our uh, for miking uh, a drum set. Here's a little bit more on that DM, I'm sorry, the DM20 uh, rim mount, uh, the RM1. Uh, by the way, this thing also matches the same diameter of the FM uh, lectern microphones that we make. So if you ever do have an application where you have a lectern that you cannot drill into, but you need to temporarily mount something to, uh, you can use one of these. You just have, need to make sure that the thickness of the lectern matches the uh, width of our uh, clamp on there. But anyway, we do sell these a la carte. Uh, 
to go ahead and mount onto uh, your drum. And these have a heavy polymer uh, mic clip on it to help reduce any transfer of sound from the drum into our microphone. So this is where uh, I would like to just talk for a quick moment about Earthworks. You know, everything is handmade in Milford, New Hampshire. Uh, we are a woman-owned company, so for any public jobs, if you have to procure from some minority business class uh, enterprises, we qualify for that. Uh, we have a terrific warranty policy. Uh, we have FTW on board as one of our great partners who can help answer application questions. And uh, we want to thank you for this opportunity to present today. Uh, JC, thank you very much. And uh, uh, you covered a lot of material there. And uh, there's one topic that I and, and cover a little more because you had some excellent diagrams. But before we do that, there was a question about the um, acoustic mechanical isolation. Microphones that get mounted into podiums and mounted into tables, uh, there's always the concern that, all right, all I need is somebody just wrapping their fingers or, or doing something on the table and it's going to make all the audio unusable. Well, what's the situation? How, how, how good is the isolation? So one of the things that is true with any gooseneck microphone, if you do go ahead and move it, there is a little bit of transfer on the on that side of the microphone. You'll hear the uh, the flex make a little bit of noise in your audio. But when it comes down to the surface of your lectern, uh, we first off have the rejection of audio from the rear. That uh, you know, just turning a a drum a uh, lectern top into a drum uh, is less likely to happen. But then that little O ring that mounts to our microphone is the only point of contact onto the microphone and that rubber helps keeping any audio transfer into our our microphone yeah critically important and it is uh it is the case that not all of them not all uh, lectern and tabletop microphones are the same in that regard uh that's very true important one. That's the other true. topic uh, the other topic uh, when you had the slides that uh showed the reduction in the total count of microphones needed to cover either a choir or from the uh, microphones that are hanging in a ceiling application uh, the three to one rule popped into my mind and it's like, wow, what a, what a great thing. If you actually look, in fact, I don't know if you can scroll back to those, uh, that might be tough to do on short notice here, but if you, uh, if you actually look at those slides and we'll go back here, just a couple of them so you can see what I'm talking about, uh, just coverage of, uh, people using different numbers of microphones. Here we go. Uh, that's one and, and the one on the choir is the same way. When you think about the three to one rule, it's very difficult to maintain that. If you look at the eight conventional microphones there, for example, or if you get more microphones in front of a, a choir, the concept that, uh, yes, the microphone that you're primarily being picked up on should be uh, uh, three times closer than the next microphone, that all goes out the window from a practical standpoint when you have to use a whole lot of microphones. It does, it does. So and, and that's count. the whole thing. You know, David Blackmer, when he came up with DBX and compression and limiting, was to create lifelike sound. And so all that silly science stuff that I talked about in the beginning, being the control of the polar pattern and the quick response of our, our diaphragm and our even frequencies, you know, going from whether it's, you know, 20 kilohertz down to 20 hertz, there's less than a bump in any frequency greater than about two or three dB. So the goal with this is lifelike sound, you know, and so often in installation or a church we have uh, inexperienced users who don't understand EQ, and that takes up time, and that's where they get into trouble. Absolutely. And if you can go back uh, another slide or two to show the uh, choir mic, we had someone actually uh, type in that they would like to see that diagram again on the choir mic uh, okay. uh, coverage. Because uh, that this this uh, points that uh, to that question uh, very clearly. Um, a lot of microphones in front of a lot of people is uh, perhaps one solution to make sure everybody's clear close to a microphone, but it creates this uh, acoustic phasing problem that's a nightmare. And uh, especially uh, as you get into microphones that have uh, very irregular off-axis response. Now look at this on the other hand, here's the, here's the Earthworks treatment, and uh, we don't have that. We've got a minimum number of microphones, you have less uh, trouble with the three to one rule, but you also have this, uh, look at the back rows. Uh, you know, the, if you look at the coverage, the guys in the front of the choir, certainly are gonna get picked up uh, by the microphones that are close to them that are right in front of, but that is offset to some degree by the fact that someone in the back row is getting coverage on three different microphones. Yes, and you know, also uh, we have some uh, YouTube videos where you can see uh, some applications and on our website, we have some application 
installs where, you know, we've got a church down in the Carolinas that's, uh, I think, an 800 person church uh, using uh, this capsule uh, on a, a, one of our variants. But it's basically this, uh, the, that C30, uh, you know, installed. And uh, I think it's maybe a dozen or 15 some microphones. It's pretty cool. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. On behalf of everybody at Earthworks in Milford, New Hampshire, we are grateful to be one of your partners.